Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Ah, yeah! Wow, this is what it's like to be separated from your body. To be fair, I feel like I have experienced this before, but wait, wait. In this liminal space, whatever I manifest in my mind becomes real. Oh, oh, I know, I know. Check it out. Check it out. Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. This is a D&D podcast and sometimes a courtroom drama podcast about four dads from our world flung to the Forgotten Realms in the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, your rock star in chains, <laughs> being held down by a system designed to... Nah, he's the bard of the group and let's hope those charisma rolls help him out here. He's Glenn's the man fact. in the trial box. Alice in Chains reference and it like Man in the Box. Never mind. Well, let's Sorry. move on. Let's keep doing the podcast, guys. It's <laughs> gonna be a good one. I can tell. You're the best person to be in court. You're gonna, you should represent yourself. You have a higher persuasion role than pretty much any lawyer. This yeah, you name good. any lawyer with a higher persuasion role than me. Glenn's dad fact. Since we're in a courtroom state of mind, Glenn's dad fact is he has conflated the movies Scent of a Woman and A Few Good Men in oh, his mind. My goodness. So in his head, he's like, Yeah, Jack Nicholson goes up and goes, Hoo Hoo-wah! Justice is blind. <laughs> you yeah, can't handle the men. true eye. That's how it goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you watch way too many TBS movies while stoned. The Superstation, it'll get you every time. It's either Scent of a Few Good Men or <laughs> A Few Good Woman. A Few Good Woman. <laughs> Scent of a few men. That's the, <laughs> That's the name of this show. <laughs> no. Sorry, Beth. All right. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who turns into a barbarian when he enters the Forgotten Realms. This is the fourth act of the journey through Daryl's senses. And like, if you know anything okay, about Shakespeare's five acts, it's the shortest. Man. Yeah, this is the shortest. I'll just keep it nice and quick. His favorite taste is the taste of his uh, sister's God. beer. Um, <laughs> that sentence was a roller coaster. <laughs> no, it's only a roller coaster if you're a bunch of if pervs. You're a dirty, there's, dirty boy. There's literally no way that would be One, dirty. I'm not a perv. And then two, I uh, I thought your that- picture for your costume had a not safe for work tag on it. That's how much of a perv you are. <laughs> it had a not safe for work tag on Twitter. <laughs> it did for me. It did. <laughs> Your Halloween costume was so many levels of tragic. Okay, let's get away from my Halloween costume. I didn't notice there was costume. shit on your face until I stared shit, at it for initial blood. 15 minutes. not on trial today for the choices she made. It wasn't shit, it was blood. Will, let's go over to you. Thanks, Beth. Oh, I have to say my least favorite. Oh, uh, what's your least favorite? Defeat. The taste of defeat? <laughs> the, taste the taste of, defeat. or the taste of defeat, like the taste defeat. of your feet. Oh. <laughs> taste of defeat's the joke one. I was going to say, this is too dark. I was going to say it's also the taste of his the sister's, sister's beer. beer. It's better <laughs> so than- he loves it, but then it reminds him how shitty he is. Because that is the taste of defeat. It's a complex uh, brew when he takes yeah. a taste of it. <laughs> complex brew of emotions. A right. potent brew. Hello, I'm Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, the fictional character on the podcast Dungeons and Daddies. He's a Birkenstock rockin', crunchy, munchy, hippie, nature druid granola dad 
And my fact about Henry this week is this is not his first time in a courtroom, y'all. He was involved in an incredibly protracted legal dispute with his neighbor over the incredibly graphic mural that Mercedes O. Garcia painted on their side wall of their house of Mother Earth giving birth to the world. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so a lot of blood it was vivid and realistic as that could be <laughs> please don't draw that fan art people please don't draw that no please do they went to court uh, and ironically you know they had the neighbor dead to rights on zoning and free speech laws but like they wanted to do like this big theatrical thing where like they called mercedes o garcia as a witness as mother earth and she pretended to be a mother earth and the whole thing oh. was so annoying that oh. they got held in contempt <laughs> so the settlement was that they had to put like a tasteful privacy tree up in front of the mother earth thing but the neighbor knows it's there i always thought mercedes was the more practical one i thought she was cool until a different, today different angle to her this is the secret dad fact is that i think everyone's been like well i guess henry's probably zany and mercedes is like super cool and like, guys mercedes is weird enough that she married henry that's, that's all all you True. need to know about Mercedes. Okay, but I mean, like, I feel like there are a lot of specifically like visual artists who come off as like super normal, like practical people, but then they're like, did you know that I drew the inside of your eyelids last night? And so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's a give and take there. There's a lot of chaotic energy on both yeah. sides of that couple. That was my go-to move on a second date. I guess it doesn't work. Hello, I'm Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally detached stepfather in Rogue. Fun fact about Ron this week, also legally involved um <laughs> the sequel to legally blonde <laughs> rob probably has a warrant out for his arrest for parking tickets because he thinks that um he thinks that if you get a parking ticket it's like permission to park there <laughs> it's like an admit one like oh great i got my ticket to park here and they did it for me and everything oh, wow. they already took 50 dollars out of my bank account that's nice they just yeah. went by and went like good job yeah. I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. Hi, Hi dad. dad. My fact today is not going to be a big fact about me. It's going to be me introducing the guest on today's episode. Boo, we want to hear about you. Tough titty. <laughs> <laughs> My dad fact is I know this person. What is your, oh, fuck it, I'm going to make it up. She is the <laughs> video queen at Polygon. She is an internet witch. She's an <laughs> academic. She is spooky. She does streams of things. <laughs> She's okay. Her name is Jenna Steber. Say hey. hi, Jenna. Hi, hi, Jenna. Hi, hi, everybody. My Hello. dad fact for this episode is that uh, last year I went to a therapist briefly who was too rich and too old to understand what my job was. <laughs> <laughs> and she recommended that I quit and get a law degree instead. So this is wow. for you, Barbara. Wow. If you're out there, you don't know what Man. podcasts Man. are, I think, probably. <laughs> I can't believe you got therapy from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Before anything happens narratively, another raven comes in holding another package, and when one of you opens it, you see a whisk inside. And this was another item. Which one of us opened it? It's up to you. Oh, do we get to I decide stuff it. on this podcast, Anthony? Okay, Ron, you open it. I open it, and it's a whisk. <laughs> it is a whisk. So this was another Patreon elite session that we did. They call themselves the Piss Bandits, and they came up with this item. So this item is called the Wind Whisker. When you twirl it, it creates a mini tornado that whisks away any creature in a five-foot cube to a spot of your choosing within 50 feet, and this can only be used once per day, and you have to roll to see if it breaks or not. So that's another item that you now have. Ooh. Daryl throws it out of the courtroom and closes the door. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Piss Soldiers. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Piss Bandits, for giving us something that Daryl immediately destroyed. No, I don't do it. Okay. To briefly summarize what happened last episode, you chased down death to the Meth Bay Courthouse. There was a big long line of people coming out of the Meth Bay Courthouse. The entire town of Meth Bay seemed like it was initially like a cool Tortuga, Moss Eisley kind of place, but since has had somebody crack down and there are a lot of like knights running around putting people in change, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, everybody seems like they're a cop. And inside you managed to Track down Glenn's soul as it went to do the Battle Axe of Hatred, which is now missing a demon where there used to be a demon. Mm. You destroy the Battle Axe of Hatred and put the soul back into Glenn's body. And as you were about to leave, the door slammed shut and the judge of the next case that was going to be heard was Bill Close, Glenn's father. 
and court is now in session for the trial of the people of Faerun versus Glenn Close. Hoo Holy smokes, is that, Glenn, is that your dad? What's going, what, what, sir, I demand an explanation. What is this? What have we walked ourselves into? So this is, uh, this is my next big, uh, scheme, my big thing. Hey, officer, this guy's not a judge. Can you get him off of here? Arrest him. I thought your dad was like a musician or whatever. I mean, like, he had a lot of jobs, so, you know, this isn't too super surprising. Glenn, remember that scam we used to run, uh, the Salvation? army stuff with the santa and the elf yeah yeah yeah. this is like that but like bigger oh okay officer he just admitted it's a scam he it's just a scam. said he's not a judge <laughs> I'd like silence, in the court. silence in the court silence in the court what run you- well i i thought that's what we were supposed to uh anyway <laughs> so i'm a lawyer now <laughs> what oh no <laughs> I was actually about to ask, yeah, for your defense. Long story short, just so we can get on with the trial so I can get out of here, you're harsh my buzz. Glenn and I, we used to run a lot of good little schemes. I used to run some schemes on my own, try to get some, got a lot of dogs in the fire, you know how it is. And I thought, what's the best version of a good scheme for getting paid, for getting stuff? And I realized it's two magic words, and they are civil and forfeiture. So basically... <laughs> I kind of took over this Objection, I don't understand the second word. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Ron. Ron, you're a good lawyer. I appreciate it. This is good. Yeah, Ron's my lawyer for sure. Yeah, what did you mean by that? It means that when the law thinks that you're guilty of something, they can take all of your stuff. But they don't Not give the stuff to the process. judge. The judge doesn't go home with the stuff. I would disagree. He says gesturing at the large pile of items that you saw when you came in, of which the Battle Axe of Hatred was but one. Mm. And he goes, I'm basically the grand big dad judge. And uh, Yeah, he's like a poobah. Yeah, I'm like the poobah. Poo-bah. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Willie wanted me to kill you, but like that was like a bummer. Like I'm not doing that. But you know, yeah, nice. So yes, technically, if you get you know convicted, you could go to prison forever, or like other bad stuff could happen. You might die. I wouldn't be the one who did it though. Like there's some bad. Do you want me to explain how the trial works? This whole trial's out of order. What's going on? Is Glenn under arrest? What in tarnation is happening here? Yeah. My dad asked you to kill us. A little bit. Yeah. That's stuff for you and him to discuss, though. I don't want to, like, bum myself out. Fraud, don't worry. I got an ironclad legal defense. I figured out a way out of this already. Don't worry, everybody. I'm very worried, Glenn, but okay. I will let my client speak freely. (laughs) Glenn, you want to say something to your dad? I mean... Yeah, Glenn, do you have anything you want to say to your dad right now? Like, it's... Like, fuck off? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, but, you know, I'm pretty... You want to tell him to French off? You know, you want to tell him to to frick his own business? Man, you're friends with a couple of narcs, huh? Yeah, I mean, You're a judge! Hey, sir, you're a (laughs) judge! <laughs> you're the head narc, <laughs> sir. No, I'm like the cool judge. You know, you're not cool anymore. The moment you became a judge, you're not cool. He puts on sunglasses and he goes, I'm the cool judge. And he puts his feet up on the bench. Then let us go. If you're the cool judge, then just let us go. I don't know, guys. Your this Honor, pretty cool. would you explain what we're supposed to do, please? Yeah, so here's how it's going to work. You guys are all the defense, I presume. Daryl raises his hand. Yeah, you, big boy. Daryl absolutely always obeys authority. And as he slowly begins to realize that you're actually the judge, he's getting very nervous now um (laughs) does glenn have a lawyer i don't know he's got three bros two of whom are narcs so you tell me so it's up to us okay i'm so sorry for interrupting you sir i hope that doesn't affect our case (laughs) i mean it might it might shit i'm sorry for everything i said before i thought you weren't in charge i'm sorry we're on his head legal counsel for uh, my team not that I'll need it. Actually, it's Professor Ron Stambler Esquire. So Bill is addressing solely Ron when he says all this. He's looking only at you. Because I'm going to bring in my crack prosecutor. They are the uh, best prosecutor I got in Meth Bay. And basically, the two of you are going to go toe-to-toe. Each side gets two witnesses, and you're going to each try to provide arguments for or against the charges against my baby boy, which are uh, the two charges are being a bad dad and being a bad person. Guilty. Wait, no, okay, Glenn, so we Glenn, can just skip this whole Glenn, thing if you, you want doing? to. What are you doing? Oh, move to strike that statement from the record. As a joke, everything Glenn says is a joke. Is that an argument you're making? Mm. Ron, help us out here. You say you're a lawyer. Ron, are you a lawyer? You said you were. I, uh, what does Ron do? I'm what is Ron's job? I'm I don't definitely know in charge does. here. I'm definitely in charge. I was just wondering which side am I supposed to argue? <laughs> it's up to you, man. You're supposed to protect me, man. Okay. All of those charges are false. Being a bad father, no, I'm awesome. Being a bad person, wrong. I'm the coolest person I know. Your Honor, my client has chosen to do the thing where he doesn't talk for the amendments. 
<laughs> the amendments. The five. He's chosen to do his Fifth Amendment rights. He's pleading the fifth. Yes. We all know about the pleading the fifth. That's on the close family coat of arms is I plead the fifth. <laughs> However, the fifth here in Faerun means that you plead. You'll answer every question that's asked of you, and you will be an active participant in your own trial. <laughs> ah, dang it. No, oh, we forgot to read their rules. Okay, so what's going to happen is the prosecution and the defense are going to make arguments. I'm going to write down every argument that you make, and the arguments can be specific things that relate to the overall charges. For example, Glenn is a bad father because he smokes weed in front of his kid. Glenn smokes weed in front of his kid, and that's a bad thing would be an argument. Objection. You're doing the trial before we're doing the trial. Which is one example. Okay. That one doesn't count. I did that to my own kid. That one's fine. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It's up to you. Then it's the other side's job by a cross-examination or by questioning the witness to uh, try to disprove that basic argument. What's going to happen is I'm going to take all these arguments. We're going to get 12 randomly selected jurors, and they're going to decide which of those arguments have merit and which one. I raise my hand? Yeah. Can I be a juror? No, you cannot. The jurors are going to be randomly selected from people on the Dungeons & Daddies Patreon Discord. They will Henry have their raises names. his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Bill turns directly to the camera and winks and goes, you two at home might be able to decide yeah. Glenn's fate as well by heading to patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. Wink. And then we go the back into the show. on the bottom of the screen. He points at it. Lines are open. But yeah, so I'm going to email them personally, take away their names, anonymize them into juror numbers, and then put them in a separate server where all of them, not knowing who anybody is, are going to talk to each other and decide which arguments have merit and which ones don't. And the ones that have merit have different dice values assigned, and I'm going to roll dice for those. And the number of points that I get on the total of all the dice rolls gives you the score. And I'm going to compare the score of the prosecution versus the score of the defense. And that'll determine whether he's guilty or not Freddie, you're so screwed. We're more screwed than the deck of many things. <laughs> Anthony, do you think that there's a bunch of like freshman law students listening to this just fucking amped out of their goddamn minds at the idea of like the court being a D&D thing? Like just like fucking frothing at the <laughs> mouth right now, just losing their fucking minds at this awesome game mechanic that we are putting into the world. I strongly suspect that law students are going to feel the same way about this episode that D&D fans feel about the rest of our podcast, ah. which is that we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Love it. We're bringing down the entire art form. We're nerds and we suck. We should get our heads swirly. Objection slander. <laughs> As you say that, you turn and you see, why don't you describe what you look like? I'm about four feet tall and I've got very, very dapper black robes on. Um, but they're cinched in the middle, so you can tell that I look fit. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my intro where I just talked all about my six-pack abs. <laughs> <laughs> and what you see peeking out from the top of the robes is a mouse head. Aww. Notably a mouse, which is going to be weird in a moment. Wait, 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 sorry, mouse head, like actual scale mouse head? Yeah, scale to the four foot tall. Yeah, okay, 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 a big mouse head. Yeah, yes. not like a yeah, tiny mouse head. Not like a tiny Goomba mouse from head. Super Mario Bros. <laughs> yeah, 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 not a Goomba from Super Mario Brothers, the film. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and I've got wings that are actually to scale for a bird. So they're very, very small, not very wow. small. <laughs> and human hands. Let the record show, let the record of the podcast show that this lawyer has uh, big mouse ears and uh, uh, wings. Thank you, bailiff. <laughs> so the massive dragon goes, okay. Back to the lawyer. So Bill Close looks and goes, oh, here they are. This is Radicus Finch, my number one prosecutor. <laughs> they put more people away than you could possibly even count up to. Hi, hi Radicus. Uh, Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. I put my hand out. Uh, they accept your hand. Oh, uh, hi. Um, thanks. And I walk away. <laughs> Sidebar, Your Honor, I go to Daryl, like, Daryl, you're blowing this case, man. You gotta get it together. I've never even been to jury duty. I can't. Lawyer things. Courtroom movies are horror movies for me. I can't take it. This is too much. Daryl, let me tell you, guys... you something that I've learned from my years of the hippie lifestyle. Authority is just an illusion, man. It's all made up. These are just people. We're, we can't beat this. If they say he's guilty, he's guilty because they said so. Like, you can't. They're the authority. It's over. We've lost. Like, I can beat a dragon. I can't beat this. This is it. This is the law. It's over. Worst comes to worst, we bust Glenn out of here. We run like hell. But, you know, right now, we gotta play their game. We gotta okay. negotiate right? Only we can judge ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, Look, I know I yeah. have a lot of hang-ups and guilt about stuff. Like, I can do that. But guilt? Like, I'm not a, huh? No, I'm not guilt. the G the word. Guilty? From now on, we just say the G, the G word. word. Somebody okay. say guilty? Was no. it a guilty plea? Somebody? No, no. no. Nice try. You're, you're 
on narc. <laughs> nice. Yo, we'll just beat the legal system, y'all. <laughs> I think Daryl, just without realizing, is just like holding Peyton's hand like it's his dad's hand. Ow, ow, <laughs> ow. It's okay. Oh, ow. Oh, sorry. It's a pain. All right. All laws are fake. Yeah. <laughs> are there any people like watching in the audience or whatever? There's all the other chained up prisoners who are waiting for their turn to trial and they're all kind of like, ugh, because you just jumped the queue. Are they wearing prison clothes or are they wearing regular? They're wearing whatever they got when they got arrested. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to take a brief recess to see if anybody has a cool jacket uh, blazer, if you will, so that I can look more lawyer-like. Why don't you roll investigation? Okay. (laughs) Or perception, either. Ooh, that's an 18. Wow, so you describe what kind of coat you find. Whatever you wanted to find, you find it. It's definitely pinstriped and tailored quite nicely. (laughs) It comes with a tie somehow, (laughs) and... um. I've never seen the Lincoln lawyer with Matthew McConaughey, but that's probably how I look. And it's purple also, but like a cool purple, not like a weird Spencer's purple. Can Ron wear pants now? No, Ron still cannot wear pants. You just got the coat. Just kidding. It's a whole jumpsuit. It's a lawyer jumpsuit. (laughs) Then the bottom half still burns off. (laughs) Ron can wear like a trench coat. Yeah. I want this though. That doesn't make him look more trustworthy though if he's got a trench coat and no pants. Ron, just stay seated. Don't stand up. I think it'll help. I stand for justice. I think you lack some authority when you have no pants. (laughs) Prosecution, whenever you're ready, go ahead and call your first witness. Oh, jeez, Louise. Or actually Wait, do opening, opening statement statements. if you want to. Sorry, do opening statement. I forgot. How are you a judge? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't speak out of turn again. I'm sorry, sir. You better be. I raise my hand. And he does a finger gun at you. He goes, ha, ha. I just want to say I'm sorry for speaking out of turn. Thank you very much. And I Yeah, you down. should be. Ha, ha. So let's do opening statements. Radicus, why don't you go first? My main baby. <laughs> Ron starts taking notes on a legal pad and whispering nothing to the people next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's like desperately trying to hear to be comforted by whatever Ron is saying. <laughs> yeah, the whole time, yeah, Daryl's leaning over like, wait, what? 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 <laughs> Radicus Finch has the most put upon expression on their face that you can imagine on a mouse. <laughs> Very cute. But, you know, they're just trying to do their job and that's what they're here for. And they sidle up to the judge's stand and they say, Your Honor, the crimes of Glenn Close are too many to enumerate today. It simply would not be a good use of your time or our time to talk about every single issue. The drug use, rampant. The child endangerment, constant. The apathy with which he approaches his relationship with his only child. Today, I want to focus on a more serious crime, and then we'll talk about the bad father stuff. The main charge I want to bring against Glenn Close today, second-degree murder. (gasps) Whoa. He raises his, his sunglasses and looks at you with surprise, like, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> now the Radicus first uh, opening uh, 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 comment uh, s- s- twist. <laughs> That's like a second removed cousin. It doesn't mean anything. It's not, <laughs> not real murder. You could fall in love with that crime. <laughs> Funny you should say that, Daryl. We'll talk later. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Darryl, you're in trouble. Like, Radicus got your number. Daryl, shut up! Daryl's eyes are wide at Henry's. He tries to grab Henry's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Henry and Peyton both hold Daryl's hands. <laughs> Give him a reassuring pat. Ow, ow. Please, Radicus, continue. Today I will bring to the stand two witnesses who have seen firsthand the dangerous positions that Glenn Close has put himself, his child, and the people who he cares most about in. Got that preposition. He didn't think I would. I didn't. But I should have known. I should have known. I always trust. I always bet on Brad because that's what we say. I lean over to Ron. I'm like, Ron, you got an idea for what our opening statement's going to be? Yeah, I wrote down the word innumerable. (laughs) (laughs) Thus concludes my opening statement. All right, defense, your turn. I got this one, y'all. Don't worry about it. Wait, Glenn, you're going to do your own opening statement? Yeah, it's important that the people here assembled hear from, you know, the accused. and They get a sense of how cool I am. All right, here we go. Everyone else, whenever Glenn says something dumb, a lawyer friend of mine said the important thing to do is to say, my client has advised me that they are going to do this so that the judge knows it's not us being dumb. It's the, although that's kind of selling Glenn down the bus. Never mind. Our client has advised us that he's going to do his own opening statement. Yeah. Judge, jury of the court. I stand before you accused by laws, by a number of statute laws that you've accused me of. However, I move to invalidate this whole trial because I do not consent to your laws. I do not consent to your rules. Therefore, bound by my interpretation of the true law, common law, I'm actually totally innocent of any and all of your made up crimes because they're not real. How can you be guilty of a law if the law is not real? I rest my case. 
Hoo-ah. We do not rest our case. <laughs> we don't. Right, so you don't get to call any witnesses. That means you're done. No. Just a speed run where Radicus is going to go through there too, and we're good. Daryl raises his hand. What? Hi, sir. Judge, sir. That was um, a test of Ron. Your honor. Our lawyer, uh, your honor. Sorry, your honor. Your most honorable. <laughs> our lawyer still needs to speak. Ron, just start speaking. He can't interrupt you. Go. Your honor, our client has advised us that he will be saying something hilarious as an introduction to my opening statement. <laughs> Now, you may ask yourself, why does an opening statement require an opening statement? (laughs) It's because we wanted to lighten the mood before doing a serious uh, trial. Uh, These charges are very... uh, What are the charges again? Uh, They're bad father and bad person, but now Radicus Finch has added second-degree murder to get a little bit more spicy, so who knows? Well, that doesn't seem fair. (laughs) That's how Radicus do. Radicus would like to put out that the uh, second degree murder is a subsection of the bad person. Okay, oh. there we go. Unrelated to the bad father. That's how the law works in Faerun, <laughs> is that it's a really about whether you're a bad person, and then <laughs> yeah. murdering someone is evidence of the bad person <laughs> crime. Yeah, so still just those two then. To continue your honor, today we will be asking questions to answer them in a way that seems pretty formal. Uh, thank you, and I look forward to competing against, uh, Radicus. With that, opening statements are done, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say the prosecution won. <laughs> we'll go ahead and add a point to the prosecution. Daryl leans over to Glenn. Hey, Glenn, do you want to write anything down to Nick in case this goes... Just If you want to write a letter to Nick or something, I'll give it to him. Just to, I'm not saying you're gonna lose... Just write a letter to Nick. Nah, man, I've seen those war movies. When some soldier dies, what's the first thing they find on them? They find the letter. They never don't find the letter. So that means all those soldiers are still alive. So if you write a letter before you're dead, then you're going to be dead. So I'm not going to write a letter. That's stupid. Okay. Glenn taps his head like, yeah, yeah, thinking. Eh? <laughs> and then Bill is just pointing at you and nodding like, see, see, listen to this one. He's got his dad's brains. <laughs> Prosecution, go ahead and call your first witness. It is basic witch Aaron O'Neill. <gasps> All right. Bill slams down his gavel and a purple shockwave emanates from the gavel out through the walls of the courtroom across the plains of Faerun to a uh, forest where Aaron is currently at first rounding on second base with her two dimensional boyfriend. And she is grabbed (laughs) by the force of this purple shockwave and instantly (laughs) taken back to the courtroom where she is suddenly sitting in the witness box. And she's like, uh, what? What? Hey, guys. I raise my hand. Did uh, Daryl have a question? Oh, thank you, Radicus. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> hey, Daryl. Uh, please be nice to Glenn. Can I say that? Bye. Why would I be nice I to- I put my hand down. So uh, Bill takes this moment to remind both uh, uh, lawyer groups, you can call objections whenever you want to, and whoever has the most correct objections at the end of the, the trial is going to get an additional bonus dice for their Ooh. score, just FYI. You both have a list of things that you can call objections for also, like maybe trying to tell the witness to be nice and, and lie on the stand. <laughs> might, that might be one of those. I didn't say lie. Witness is yours. Aaron O'Neill, I would request that you disregard Daryl's advice and speak only the truth. I often do. <laughs> Excellent. You're going to be a great witness. I can already tell. Oh, how does the swearing in process work? Uh, I high five her. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes, yeah. Aaron O'Neill, I simply want you to describe the circumstances surrounding your death in the battle with the library. Oh, boy. Yeah, love to talk about this. Love to bring this up as much as possible. So the dads were fighting a very large non-Euclidean mass of tentacles and book knowledge called the library. I was in the fight with them. I was knocked down to, as we say in favor and uh, no HP and uh, was on my back and was dying. I assume what you're getting at is that Glenn had the opportunity to heal me. Objection leading to heal the witness. What? (laughs) You're, uh, uh, objection. The lawyer will no longer say objection right now. Just, I guess that one sustained. The first one is overruled, so they cancel each other Do out. Do we get a point for the second one? No. <laughs> you can't object against yourself to you get points. Grinding objections? Shit, I got, I got out of loophole. <laughs> you almost figured it out, Ron. 
I was dying. I was bleeding out. Uh, Glenn had hypothetically the opportunity to heal me. And instead of doing that, he gave me like a cool one liner as I died. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was something about like 420 blaze it or something along those lines. If you'll allow me to check my notes, I believe I know what Glenn said at this moment. Shit. Oh, shit. Objection. <laughs> How do you know what Glenn said? I have a transcript. A transcript oh, from what? what? From what? There were a lot of witnesses to all of your crimes throughout favor, and you're going to find that some people have an encyclopedic knowledge of all the things that you've done and what you said. Some of whom transcribed every one of our words very nicely and volunteered to do so on a website for us. Thank you, fans. <laughs> we should establish that it was the trees record a transcript of everything that happens to Aaron O'Neill, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, fun. that's really, really yeah. good. Because as has been previously established, trees are chatty bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, Radicus, as as a professional lawyer, track down this information. I'm here to work, not play, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has the role to not get attracted to Radicus. <laughs> <laughs> Bill says, uh, go on, Radicus. Here's the transcription. Erin O'Neill says, take care of my tree. That sounds like me. Then she pauses for a moment and says, fuck it, never mind, don't take care of it. Glenn says, smoke trees? <laughs> and Erin O'Neill says, I wish I, oh God... Those are going to be my last words to you. And they were. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. really sad. That was the exact quip at that moment. Yeah, so he said smoke trees to me, so. Uh, objection, smoke trees every day. <laughs> Bill says, I, I sustain that because I agree with you. Just generally philosophically, oh. so yeah, I'll sustain that one. It doesn't matter if it's what you said or not. I know that's what you meant to say, my boy. Aaron, can you describe to me your relationship with Glenn? Oh, boy. Yeah, I met Glenn and the rest of the daddies in Orokaput. Uh, there was a, uh, a horrible vampire man uh, that we were trying to kill together, sort of. I guess we're friends? I don't know. I kind of try to take care of them every once in a while because they would definitely get themselves killed without me. And in repayment, they stress me the fuck out. So I don't know, whatever that relationship is. <laughs> you help them because you feel that if you weren't to help them, they would be injured. They would be in danger. Objection. Counsel is testifying. It's a leading question. Sustained. Fair enough. Sorry, Radicus, rephrase your question. Why do you help them more specifically? I believe that they would be hurt or killed if I were not around to give them advice every once in a while. And do you think behaving that way makes you a good person? God, I hope so. Otherwise, what the fuck else am I doing this for? That's a great question. Not one for me to answer in this court of law. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Glenn had the opportunity to save you, and didn't take it. What would you say that makes him? Uh, I would Objection, say Objection, speculation. <laughs> yeah, sustained. <laughs> but Bill goes sustained, but her silence is noted. <laughs> <laughs> when Glenn came by your side, what were you expecting him to do? I expected him to heal me. Why did you expect him to heal you, knowing everything that you know about Glenn? We were in a fight. I know he has the capacity to heal me. It feels like the thing a reasonable person would have done in that situation. A reasonable person. It's an interesting phrase to use in regards to Glenn, wouldn't you Ob say? Objection. That's wouldn't a leading you statement. Say? <laughs> <laughs> Sustained. Uh, withdrawn. <laughs> I can so clearly imagine Radicus doing the thing where they turn away from the witness and put their hand up as if like it didn't even matter to me that I have to withdraw that <laughs> withdrawn real quick doing court shit's fun as fuck I get why people like these movies <laughs> yeah this should definitely be a thing more D&D campaigns do I'm gonna throw that out there right now <laughs> now that you've ironed out all the gameplay kinks and into how to do this now that we've made it a perfect prototype of a new gameplay system all right, continue. Given the opportunity, if the positions were reversed, would you have healed Glenn at that moment? Yes. Objection! <laughs> Question calls for speculation. Did I do that right? Oh, I would say uh, sustained. Yeah, she can't know for certain what she would have done. So it is a speculative uh, answer. I would argue that a reasonable person, a good person in that instance, would not have a question about whether or not to freely and ably heal somebody to prevent them from dying. But withdrawn. As we both know about each other, Radicus, I always allow you a sentence worth of a monologue before withdrawing your, <laughs> what you said. It's all about the performance. So you're well within the range of acceptable. Ironically, the legal rules in Faerun work exactly the way that <laughs> law TV shows on our, in our world work. That's how the court yeah. system works. I mean, they'd better. I don't know shit about the law. <laughs> Aaron, do you believe... And I don't believe this is a speculation. This is a direct question. So 
cool your jets. Objection speculating about a speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Meta speculation. Job, Meta speculation. I wasn't going to say anything. She speculated I was going to say something, but I didn't. Nice, Daryl. <laughs> Thanks. High five. Oh, no. Am I sworn in now? <laughs> <laughs> Silence from the defense, please. Order. Sorry. I will throw you in contempt. That's a thing that we have. Aaron, you survived that encounter, correct? I did. Do you have any reason to believe that Glenn would know you would survive that encounter? No. Hmm. I had not told him about my birds at the time, so I do not believe he was aware of my regenerative capabilities. So to summarize, and correct me if this is inaccurate... Glenn Close came near your position as you were dying. He knew you were dying. He had the capacity to heal you and chose not to. And as a result of that inaction, you died. All of that is correct. That's second degree murder, (laughs) folks. Aaron O'Neill grits her teeth and looks at Glenn and like kind of shrugs like, I'm sorry, but what do you want me to do? Glenn is completely unfazed. Ooh, power move. The prosecution is concluded with this witness. Counsel requests a dad huddle, your honor. Go ahead. Okay. Gang, that did not go great for us. But here's what I'm thinking. Glenn, what, what, why didn't you heal her? No idea. Cannot remember at all. If I remember correctly, you put a book on oh, her. Oh, that's right. To get her so to that destroy, that yes. hits it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you were specifically... You were, you were specifically <laughs> trying to use the fact that he was going to hit Aaron to kill the liar. It's not great. We should... It was not, <laughs> no. definitely not great. Well, we shouldn't bring that up on we our... Should we should definitely not bring that up. up. So, because since I'm the witness, I don't want to hear what you're going to be saying before mm-hmm. you ask the witness. So I'm going to take off my headset and just okay. wait at me when it's okay i can put okay, my headset back on great, great, great. oh cool okay cool I, I know sometimes i'm hard on aaron but like you know in this situation like aaron was like murdering a whole town of people i think you also have witness assassin you know what is that you assassinate the character that's of true. aaron that's true that's she true. literally just came out from like being like i'm gonna kill all these kids and these people because trees are more important than people like look i like her now i understand i'm just saying there's definitely an argument that maybe she should have died is what i'm saying i'm just saying maybe that's the way to do it what about this it's like look at it this way if you think that glenn is a bad person then why do you continue to help glenn right <gasps> That's a good, that's a good yeah, one, good, right? Good, good, Literally, good. are they going to imply that every soldier on the battlefield who's ever not done the most perfect thing, who has ever walked past a wounded soldier and hasn't sacrificed his life to do it, should be accused of second-degree murder? Are you saying every hero, every person who's been in a battle, who has ever had a chance to save somebody but didn't okay. in that moment yes, is a murder? It. Yes, got it, got it. Are got there it. sidewalks here? Are there sidewalks in Faerun? I don't know, gosh, I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen any, any, no. Why, what's up, Ron? Are there, like, cobblestones or something? Yeah, yeah sure, why, sure. What's, what's the yeah. thought? If you guys remember, back home at San Dimas, sometimes we get big trees that kind of crack the sidewalk or crack the cobstones. They make bike ramps. And uh, sometimes those trees need to be cut down and it's not an easy decision, but it's sort of where, the right thing to do. Where are you going do. with and this, Ron? To speculate that Glenn could have saved Aaron, but didn't and neglects the fact that he may have had a greater good at stake, such as protecting the streets and sidewalks by chopping down- Winning the battle. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. I feel like we got two ways here. We can either try to take down Aaron and make her look like a bad person who can't judge whether Glenn is a good person, or we buy into that Aaron is a good person, but if she's a good person and she's helping us, that must mean we're good people too. So I put my hands on Ron and Henry's shoulders and I say, I trust you guys as my lawyers, even though all of this is just a sham and the law is a concept. (laughs) Anyway, go get them, tigers. Ron, you go first and then tap me in and I'll go for this ipso facto good person logic. You start with your broad side and then I'll come in and I'll be the closer. I'll clean it up. Okay, I'm going to go. All right. Hello, greetings, Aaron. Hey, Ron. Did you know that you would be in court today? (laughs) I sure didn't. Seems like a pretty sneaky bad move to have somebody just have to take off their whole day without even warning them beforehand. I bet you were up to something really great. Yeah, I was. I was about to be. Objection. Irrelevant. Well, now that we have established that, (laughs) Your Honor. Ron, you were going to get fucking annihilated by objections. I'm just going to make that prediction right now. (laughs) Aaron, do you have any uh, either cobblestone, cement, or uh, sort of like hard surfaces where you live? (laughs) Oh, my Uh, God. Y- yes. Daryl's like nodding, like trying to act like this is smart. Like, yeah, go get He's like, yeah, get her, get her. <laughs> and uh, do any of the roots of your beloved trees happen to permeate the ground near those hard surfaces? Objection. What is the relevance to the goodness of Glenn Close? I, I'm establishing relevance, your honor. I just need a few more opportunities to be relevant. So Bill and Anthony are both, like, very curious to see where the fuck this is going. So for now, we'll overrule it. Answer the question, goddammit. Yeah, so, so, 
Aaron says, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the roots tend to go under the stone. And like, I have stone steps leading up to my house. And yeah, some of the roots probably go under the stone. When the trees grow, do the roots ever <laughs> pop through or disturb any of the hard surfaces? No, generally, they're smart enough to know to go around them because I can talk to them. Okay, Henry, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so retroactively, <laughs> that objection is absolutely sustained. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> What's funny is Anthony not realizing how much you just cut. <laughs> like, this was all talked about beforehand, and then he just cut down her entire argument I with that. I thought that he would say yes. <laughs> I didn't know what you wanted me to say. I'm I mean, sorry. I still don't know where that would have gone, but it's just funny that you shut it down. Oh, my God. Yeah, I definitely should never hear your planning then, because that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> Henry gets up and like files he just like kind of uh, you know, Henry I'm right here behind you if you ever want to tab me in her <laughs> <laughs> Henry uh, straightens his back and uh, steps up to the witness stand and paces back and forth and says do you consider yourself a good person I think so okay what in your estimation is why are the dads in this realm Objection relevance. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, I'd mm -hmm. like a little bit of leeway. So Bill it goes, speaks to Glenn's nature as to what he is doing in this round. Great job, Bill Henry. Says, Good job. Typically, I would say sustain, but just watching Ron just fucking eat shit on that last uh, relevance objection means I definitely want to see where this goes to see if you can go zero for two. Overruled. <laughs> objection, I did not eat shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, sustained when he figuratively ate shit. So Aaron says, well, my understanding is that it's four dads from another realm flung into the Forgotten Realms on a quest to save their children. So to your, the best of your knowledge, Glenn is here to save his child. I believe so, yes. Would you consider that to be a selfless act? Uh, yes. Do you believe that selfless acts are good acts? Yes. Glenn is a person doing a selfless act to save his child. After this incident, you did continue to help the dads on their quest. Is that correct? Yes. You consider yourself to be a good person. As a good person, would you knowingly help a bad person do something that you didn't agree with? Oh, interesting. Uh, Answer the question, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get her, get her, get her. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> no, I don't believe I would uh, knowingly help a bad person if I wanted to be a good person. So would you say then that Glenn is a good person? Uh, by the logic you laid out, I suppose Objection. so. Objection. Aaron's goodness or badness or supposition of either is irrelevant to the situation. We are talking about Glenn Close's badness. Objection to the objection. I think that when we're talking about the relative terms of goodness or badness, some sort of uh, reference is used in other people. Objection. Vagueness. We're not talking about moral goodness. We're talking about the law. <laughs> <laughs> I am merely trying to establish that Aaron considers herself to be a moral person and and as a moral person views Glenn as a moral person as well. And I would argue that that has no place in the courtroom. In a trial over the morality of the person is the central question whether Glenn is a bad person. I would say that it's self-described. All right, so it's my fault for making the law say good person, bad person. I, I invited this moral diatribe on us. So uh, I'm going to overrule the objection. It is relevant Which whether one? or not. <laughs> Specifically the first one saying that we can't be arguing about whether or not Glenn or Aaron are good or bad people because the nature of what is a good person is unfortunately germane to this conversation because I worded the charges like that. <laughs> Ron, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Henry, can I ask a question? Our third chair counsel, Daryl S. Wilson, Esquire, PhD, uh, would now like to take the floor. Sure. Hi, uh, Daryl Wilson here, third chair. I don't have a PhD. I don't want to go to jail for perjury. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just me. I do barbecue. I stay at home. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Um, Aaron, hey, nice to see you again. Hey, Daryl. Are you dead? Uh, am I currently dead? No, I am not. Interesting. Have you ever known a murder victim to be uh, not dead? <laughs> oh, 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 kill shot! Kill shot! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't suppose. I don't suppose I do. I rest and I go to sleep. <laughs> no, no, no. I nearly pass out. I sit down. I go, okay. Good job, counselor. Thanks. We have no more questions for this witness. I have a closing question for Aaron. Go right ahead, Radicus. Aaron, did you die? Uh, yes, I did. And could Glenn Close have saved you? Uh, yes, he could have. And did he save you? Uh, no, he did not. I rest mine. I would like to redirect. <laughs> Ooh, redirect. Yes, Ronald. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's right. Okay. It's the, yeah, it's the, according to the episodes of Law and Order, I remember. That's a thing. <laughs> Aaron, four days ago, did you have any money? Not very much, no. But you did have some. Uh, yeah. Did you give me any money? 
I don't think I did. No, you guys. Uh, could you big... have? Yes, I could have. I rest. <laughs> Uh, redirect the redirect, Your Honor. All right. If you guys want to keep doing friendly fire to your own arguments, go right ahead. Do you believe that someone can make a mistake and still be a good person? Yes. Very much so. I have nothing further. Thank you, Aaron. You are dismissed. And the, he well, wait, before she disappears, Glenn has folded a little paper airplane and I want to like toss it at Aaron to just like send her a little note. Okay, she catches it. Should I roll like a sleight of hand or something? Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's have a chance of not having more story happen. Why not? <laughs> no, it's just whether or not it gets read to the court. Okay, yeah, no matter what it be read, sleight of hand is to see if Bill sees you do it or not. Uh, three plus five, eight. So Bill snatches it out of the air. He just leaves it and goes, hip. All right, let's see what this is here. Passing notes in class, huh? And it's a drawing of Glenn like giving thumbs up and then a bunch of trees on fire and like what? a boiling cauldron of oil exploding and a bunch of trees are on fire and then like animals and people are running from it on fire like ah and then just glenn being like thumbs up <laughs> so bill looks at this and then he turns and shows it to aaron and he's like is this a is this a threat and aaron goes uh no so you did do that or you're gonna do that or what's the and he goes but this is not the place for mm, no no <laughs> and when aaron looks back over at me it's me in the exact same thumbs up pose as drawn <laughs> on the cartoon from frame and yeah. you're replacing it in the exact yeah, same like, frame. our client has established that he will be doing the joke things like he did in his opening statements and will continue <laughs> to do things that are joking and not uh real and Great. laughter, they say, is the best medicine. So one might say that he is, in fact, healing Aaron O'Neill right now. <laughs> so he slams down the gavel and his Aaron gets like spirited away by the wave of purple. She's like, that's kind of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like what I heard from that was that in terms of actual arguments put forth, prosecution put forth the argument that Glenn committed second degree murder. And so I'm going to assign different dice values to different arguments, depending on how germane I believe they are to the question of whether or not Glenn is a good parent and a good person. Mm -hmm. And they're going to range from D4 to D12. So uh, second degree murder is pretty high. So I'm going to give that one a D12. And I don't feel like defense put forth uh, their own argument, but they did try to dismantle the other, which will become relevant when the jury argues. On we this. did put forward the argument that it's not really murder because she's alive, which is a pretty good. Uh, argument. Yeah, but that'll just be a dismantling of her existing argument okay. rather than yes, support from being a good person. Bill looks over at Radicus and he goes, uh, OK, next witness, uh, Radicus. Guys, I think that went really well. I'm excited to see who this next witness is because so far I think we're in command. Yeah, I would like to call to the witness stand. Daryl Wilson. What the oh, fuck? Daryl falls out of his chair. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wilson, you will walk yourself up to the witness box. You should summon him. No, no, he still has to summon him. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. He's He's like, I can't do this. I, I tell them I'm not here. So Bill goes, all right, Daryl Wilson, here we go. And he slams down his gavel, and a purple wave comes out of the gavel, hits Daryl Wilson in the face five feet away, no. and like picks him up, <laughs> and yoinks him back to the witness box, and drops I him down. I scream, Dad. I go, Dad! <laughs> as I reach out to me, and as I it's like, baby boy! <laughs> he travels through a parallel plane for what seems like thousands of years. Eons go by in a space of no time and no reality, and he emerges five feet away. Actually, I like the idea that yeah, I go into like a portal, and they like sit me down. They explain like how being a witness works, and I have to sign paperwork. And I'm like, do I get lunch? We get lunch breaks. Like, yeah, I got a lunch break. It's like, oh, it's a cold sandwich. It's like, I meet a few people who are also being witnesses. You know, we kind of form a bond because we're all here for that day. And then they're like, all right, Daryl, it's your turn. And then I, I show up in the chair, and it's been like a week for me. Oh, hey, guys, it's been a while. Okay. Glenn, I'm going to do my best. I think I got this. I'm, I'm prepped. I'm ready to go. Daryl, have you lost weight? Yeah, no, I've been, I had some time to work out. What have you guys been up to? <laughs> We're still in the trial, man. We just realized you're getting called to the stand. I know. It's been, uh, it was a shock a week ago. I was, it took me a while to get over it, but here I am. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so good. The witness is yours, Radicus. Daryl. Yeah. Are you prepared to answer all of the following questions under the most sacred holy oath of this court of law? Oh, no. Uh, absolutely. I, I, I don't lie. I look at the judge and I nod and I smile. Never lie. I high five you. Oh, yeah. I high five. Should I say it again now that I've been sworn in? Because before I could have lied. But I didn't because I never lie. <laughs> I just swore it again. Never lie. <laughs> Daryl Wilson. How long have you known Glenn? I mean, it seems like ages, but I would say I know him as a person since we went on the field trip. I kind of, you know, an acquaintance. I've kind of seen him around at not really PTA meetings. He frankly doesn't go to those or even really the soccer games all that often. You know, I see Nick more than I see Glenn. Oh, shoot. I mean, I know him pretty well. I've known him for like a couple of years. Have you 
known him to change or evolve or become a different or better or worse person in that time? Absolutely. Since we've been transported to this world, he's become a better person. May I remind you, you are under oath. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, damn. I think he's become a better person. Can you recount for me the one two, uh, experience three. that you had? <laughs> <laughs> Can you recount for me the experience you had fighting alongside Glenn and the rest of the fathers using the drug flowers while you were trying to steal the battle axe of hatred. Objection. He can't remember that. Yeah, I don't remember very well. There was, like you said, there was drug flowers. I usually don't do drugs, sir. Absolutely not. I look up. I barely even smoke a cigarette. But uh, those, yeah, I had a lot of flowers. I mostly remember spinning and vomiting. Um, I don't quite remember what Glenn did, but I'm sure your transcriptions would tell you. Am I right? They will. I don't know why you were sarcastic <laughs> about that. You were very high-handed about that, but the answer is yes. <laughs> Daryl's sassy out of nowhere. <laughs> Would you describe the experience of being under the influence of those drug flowers as pleasant? It was horrible. Since you can't remember how convenient, I will describe it for you. You had successfully drugged quite a few number of these guards, and Glenn himself had charmed one of them, a gentleman named Harrelson, and using his charm ability sent this man into the fog. <sighs> of the various levels of, of drug flowers, an experience you admit yourself is deeply unpleasant. Mm -hmm. That man retrieved the axe for you and brought it back out. He was suffering from a number of the effects of these flowers, including levitation and vomiting and memory loss. And, and oh, just it just sounds so terrible. I'm so sorry you had to go through oh, that. Oh, thank you. It was very bad. Here's what Glenn did when he came out of the fog. I pat him on the back encouragingly and say, thanks so much, Harrelson. You have a good night. And I just sort of gently push him back into the room and close the door. This man was at the moment still charmed and was not a threat in any way because he was under the effects of all these flowers. And yet Glenn took the initiative to push him back into that fog and close the door where he would suffer from those effects for an outstanding amount of time. Why? Would you say... That's something a good man does? Well, yeah, because I assumed that... <laughs> Glenn whispers, hell yeah. Yeah. I don't like drugs, but, you know, Glenn does. And, like, I've, I've learned a lot from my friends here, like Henry and Ron and Glenn. That's, you know, some people like things that I don't like. And so maybe that guy enjoyed the drugs. I can't possibly assume that he didn't enjoy vomiting and spinning around. I mean, I don't like cigarettes. <laughs> it feels like a... It's, so it's horrible. Bill starts jerking <laughs> off in the air. Excuse me, can I object to the judge making a masturbation motion when uh, I'm testifying? <laughs> You can overrule, baby, and he just does it harder at you. And secondly, the person that he pushed into that den was a drug dealer, I, if I were to understand, and was somebody that was trying to kill us. So, you know, I mean... Was he at that moment trying to kill you, do you recall? I mean, you... Or was he charmed and drugged? But they only last for so long. I don't know how those spells work. I feel like Glenn was doing it to make sure that we can make it back safely and help Nick out, his son. Who's he trying to save? Interesting. Saved, by the way, by the judge here, who's a shitty dad and as bad of a dad as he is a judge. Objection. Nope. He's not as on trial. As bad of a dad as he is a judge. Bad, bad, He's bad. not on trial and you're not a lawyer. Sustained. Those are both true. I can't lie, but I'm right. <laughs> Talk the truth. Let's talk about Nick for a moment, shall we? Yeah. He's a good soccer player. Oh, man. He's got a good right foot and a left foot. That kid kicks with both feet. <laughs> Not at the same time. He could. <laughs> you drink. You drink alcohol. Oh, yeah. But you don't let your children drink beer, right? I mean, Grant drinks uh, Eucharistic wine. Oh, Interesting. My God. But he doesn't drink it recreationally. <laughs> I would hope not. But, you know, as a kid, you know, kids will be kids. I mean, I don't let him. I would yeah. definitely not want him to do it. No, Is there I, I a don't, reason I, you think that children aren't allowed to drink beer? Because be the law says so. <laughs> the law does say so. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Nick smoke pot? Yes. Have you ever seen Glenn observe Nick smoking pot? Yes. Interesting. This is not a moral question, but uh, would you say that that is illegal? I cannot recall the laws of California when it comes to the consumption of the pot. Oh, dear. <laughs> Bill's like, I definitely can. It is definitely illegal. <laughs> you can't remember. That's fine. Let me ask you about another I lied. I remember it's illegal. I'm sorry. I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> Lying under oath. That's but I took it back. Is, That's okay, uh, right? <laughs> no, I mean, it's still perjury. It's like if you shoplift and they stop you and you just say you didn't steal anything, there's nothing they can do. But if you admit it, they have to call the cops. It's like one of those. <laughs> I lean over Radicus. Can you be my lawyer after this for my perjury charge? I just don't let Ron be my lawyer, please. I need to get out of this. <laughs> You got it. Ron writes something on the paper and then whispers. 
Keep going with the trial, but I'm writing this down. After the experience, gathering, or one might say stealing, the Battle Axe of Hatred, Glenn left your group for a short period of time. Isn't that right? Yes. How did he leave? In the minivan. With Nick, his son. Glenn throws the horns up and be like, yeah, that was awesome. How did he take possession of the minivan? That's your minivan, is that correct? Yes. (laughs) Would you say you willingly gave him the use of that minivan to leave you behind? No, I did not. I don't know how he got the keys. I can tell you that the actual circumstances of that event was that he let Nick hotwire it. So in fact, to Glenn's credit, he is not the one who committed that crime. He let his 13-year-old son do it. Wow. Man, he can hotwire too. Objection! Is that a question? Is it, I did I hear a question there? I heard the council saying stuff. Yeah, is guys, what I just you heard. Object, Your Honor. No, please, I'm dying up here. Objection! Council, council is testifying. testifying. I will sustain that. You can rephrase that as a question. I will enter this transcript into evidence. You turn and see the lights of the Honda Odyssey turn on, and you hear the engine rumble to life. Nick rolls down the window and peeks his head out of the driver's side. He goes, "I hotwired it, and I got a natural 20." <laughs> Later, suckers. Does that sound familiar to you, Daryl? Yeah, that sounds like Nick. So cool. That's definitely a crime. He stole your van. Objection. Council's testifying again. That wasn't a question in the council's... In the Didn't council's you hear th- the inflection of my voice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Are question words the only ways questions can be posed in your world? Watch out, Henry. That's a question. It's <laughs> a trick question, Henry. Look out. That's actually secretly a question. <laughs> Daryl, do you recall Nick hot wiring and stealing your car under Glenn's supervision and approval? I don't recall those things, but I do recall the moment that you explained, which is him saying he hotwired the car and that he rolled a natural 20 and then he called us suckers and then he drove off. I recall that. Yes, and that is entered into evidence. Thank you. Yes. And then they came back. Or we found them. Oh, no, I lied again. We found them. I didn't lie. I, I just did, forgot for a second. So double perjury. Two counts double, of perjury. Double, double desperately perjury. doing the, like, stop talking <laughs> gesture with his hand. <laughs> Daryl's definitely reading it as Henry's going to kill him because he's doing the throat thing. like, what? I'm sorry. You had a little run-in. With a man formerly known as Scam Likely, is that correct? Multiple run-ins. Uh, do you remember the events that occurred after you visited Scam Likely's house and were put into a sort of truth or dare situation? Yes. And what were you playing for in that truth or dare game? I think, or, or, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> this one's not a good. great sign when the defendant says, uh-oh, super <laughs> loud. <laughs> it was a, to get our money back, Scam did a lot of things. If I help you remember, am I going to be objected by by the rest of your council, or is this going to be acceptable? <laughs> is it good? <laughs> <laughs> Ron is like straight up my favorite fictional lawyer character in any media ever devised. Like straight up the funniest lawyer ever in the history of lawyers on screen or off. Like it's so good. I'll allow it, counselor. <laughs> You were playing for a large number of jewels worth quite a lot of money that you had planned, if I recall correctly, to use to save your sons. Yes. Presumably the entire reason that you are continuing on this quest. Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes. And now we're trying to get home because we got our sons. He got his son too because he worked really hard. He's He's a good person. He's a good dad. Well, no, because we put him in a safe spot. Oh, we can't say where he is because the judge is trying to take him because you're bad dad and bad judge. Witness will answer the questions asked, you big ol' narc dork. <laughs> I'm sorry, Judge. Your Honor. That's right. Do you remember the choice that Glenn was given? I actually do not. It was a choice between keeping a number of jewels so that you could save your children by giving up his rock and roll. He would forget to learn to play the guitar and become a Linkin Park DJ. Uh, Linkin Park cover band That sounds DJ. so cool. I like Linkin Park. You'll recall then what he chose between those two? If I remember correctly... Glenn did the really cool and honorable thing of not allowing, like, look, if somebody says, hey, you have a choice, if like, a, it always bothers me in those superhero movies. Answer the where, question, sir. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I remember that he chose not to let Scam Likely force his hand. That's the way I, I, I would word it. Bill's like, I don't know, I don't fully understand what that answer meant. He said, he like, said. It was like a double he, negative on it there. It feels like he said, if I remember, hey, Glenn, did he say something cool to Scam Likely when he chose what to do? Throw the jewels away. I'll never give up being a rock star baby guitar. <laughs> for life. <laughs> <laughs> Hendrix baby, Clapton and baby. And I went over to the rat and be like, that sounds about right. Yeah, that, that, that. Okay, so yeah, he said that. So Bill Close is immediately making that like oof face, like, ooh, 
Ooh. But nodding too. Objection. Bill Close would respect the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, this is not looking good for your case, but that's 100% what I would have done, kind of mm-hmm. like nodding, like, that's my boy, all right? That is my boy. So you have your answer. Yeah, he decided to uh, keep who he is as a person, and then he went and saved his son anyways. Cool. That's beautiful. Daryl, do you know if Glenn has ever been to Disneyland? If I remember correctly, <laughs> I think he doesn't like Disneyland, but he likes Universal Studios, which is crazy because you can go through all of Universal Studios in like an hour and it Glenn all sucks. slams, his knee slams into the table so hard he almost breaks the table, <laughs> but he doesn't say anything. Daryl, I hate to inform you that's incorrect. He's a large Disney fan. In fact, he's such a big fan of Disney. Okay, I wasn't lying. That was in perjury. I just did not remember. I just want to make sure that's clear. It's okay. We still got you on the two other counts. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't go jury duty or do anything in court. He's such a big fan of Disney and Disneyland in specific that he has gone without taking his child. In fact, specifically going during school days so that he did not have to bring his child with him. Objection, Your Honor. What? what Withdrawn. Wh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ultimate no. power move. They did the thing where they said the thing that was cool and then they uh, and now we look like fools, Henry. Oh, Radicus. Do you know if Nick likes Disneyland? Withdrawn. Well, I mean, what? You I don't keep ask them a question. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, maybe Nick doesn't like Disneyland. It's not bad I if Nick doesn't like Disneyland and there's no evidence. Bill says counsel. if you want to ask questions of potential witnesses, you got to call them. As yeah, all I'm saying is she ask. didn't call Nick as a witness. And as far as I understand, I think Nick is so cool. I think Nick probably doesn't like Disneyland. So maybe Glenn was doing him a favor. You don't know. That's all I'm saying. The premise of your uh, question doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like I go and I mow the lawn without Grant because Grant doesn't like mowing the lawn. As far as I know, Nick thinks Disneyland's like mowing the lawn, which would be awesome. Awesome, because mowing the lawn is wonderful. I forget what I was trying to say. (laughs) Totally relevant metaphor. Henry, this is great. Have you ever seen Glenn give Nick a knife? I think we've all given all of our kids a knife. I think I might have given Nick a knife. Interesting. Go ahead and enter that into evidence that Daryl says all parents have given all their kids knives. (laughs) (laughs) To be clear, sir, we're in a world with slavery and that bad dads can be judges. So, yes, we've given people knives. What does Peyton think about that? It's like, hell yeah, they do. All kids deserve knives from their (laughs) daddy. You have a dragon here that could kill all of us. So, of course, we have knives. What do you mean? Everybody's we were pulled here. into this world against our will by the judge, and we've been fighting for our survival yeah. and the survival of our children. You're, you're order. damn right we've given order our in the court. Knives. Order in the court. Order in the court. Continue with your questioning. Daryl? Yes. That young man over there, is that Peyton? Yeah. You looking after him? Yeah. And he's looking after me sometimes, too, it feels like. Peyton winks and nods. Have you ever refused to give Peyton a knife because you found it dangerous? Well, yeah, that's mostly because he's oh, proven interesting response. He's proven pretty zealous with the knife. In fact, if Peyton was on trial here, I may have to keep my mouth shut when it comes to how he uses the knife. Interesting. Say whatever I want. I got nothing In to fact, hide. He stabbed Glenn, and Glenn was okay with it. That's how good of a person Glenn is. He was okay with a kid stabbing him, and instead made it a teaching moment. I did not stab him. I sliced his Achilles. There is a very clear difference. Thank you. Peyton is not on trial. Here. Peyton, rest. Peyton, what did Glenn do to you when you stabbed him in the Achilles heels? He stopped having hiccups, which means I'm fucking good at my job. (laughs) I would like to enter into evidence. Nick's reaction upon receiving a knife from Glenn, he immediately starts stabbing the door. What was the door? (laughs) Does that seem like a responsible use of a knife to you? Glenn's looking around like being like, how else are you supposed to test a knife? I don't get it. What are they getting at? (laughs) Daryl, if you gave Peyton a knife and he immediately began stabbing the nearest wooden object, would you consider that a good sign? I would not consider it a good sign or a bad sign. I would use it as a moment to maybe explain how I would use a knife. Would you allow him to keep the knife? I personally would... No speculation, Your Honor. Objection. Sustained. I would have to see in that moment. You never know. You never really know what you're going to do as a parent until you get there. Are you a parent? I have 40 children. Wow. I am a mess. <laughs> that must be tough to be there all the They're time. They're incredibly them. happy. I'm a single parent just trying to make Objection my way in this relevance. world. Just like, <laughs> fair point. They're all super successful, really well adjusted. Like, they all love their parents. <laughs> it's like a Kardashian lawyer and, and bird Kardashian family. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're social media stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're all super well adjusted. <laughs> Daryl, have you ever known Glenn to bet on child fights? <laughs> Honestly, this is just Glenn a Glenn Close Greatest like, Hits track. Daryl is like, fuck, this is great. I do not recall. Daryl, you are under oath. I'll ask you again. Do you recall Glenn Close ever betting on child fights? I do not recall. I don't recall. <laughs> I, we were in a place where there was child fighting, but I can't recall everything that happened because I was very upset by the fact that children were fighting. I can't recall. You don't recall that Glenn... Not only paced bets, but placed his son, 13-year-old Nick, 
in a child fight. Well, everybody else was eight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you. Yes. Well, upon hearing Thank that you, goes, Ron. I mean, that's just good strategy. <laughs> like, he's got a five-year up on everybody else. That's my boy right there. I could continue, but I simply see no point, given that Daryl has admitted firsthand to seeing Glenn commit several crimes. But I will ask one final question of you before I turn you over to... Uh, Ron. Objection? I don't like the way they said Ron. (laughs) (laughs) Overruled. Objection, condescension. (laughs) Overruled. Are you familiar with the concept of serial killers, Daryl? I I mean, I've heard of, yeah. Do you know any of the markers by which one defines a serial killer? Objection. Objection. Uh, Daryl is not a TV detective or a child (laughs) psychologist. Yeah, objection. Daryl is not a white lady with a true crime podcast. (laughs) Oh my God, stop (laughs) it. (laughs) This one goes out to all my murderinos and my crime junkies, or real crime junkies know. I will uh, sustain that. You're going to have to ask him, not presuming that he's an expert in this stuff. Let me then just ask you, have you recently seen Glenn Close murder a squirrel with a gun? No, I did not see Glenn Close murder a squirrel with a gun. Oh, interesting. That's not the part I thought you would object to. (laughs) Daryl, have you seen Glenn Close recently kill a squirrel? Glenn Close defended himself against a squirrel that was attacking him, yes. How did that fight start? I don't recall. Oh, you... (laughs) (laughs) Radicus, more than anything, is disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's okay with that. <laughs> Daryl's like Radicus. <laughs> I turn over this witness. Defense, the witness is yours. Thank Ron, you. Go for it. Your Honor. Uh, may I approach the yeah. witness? What's okay. Up, hey, Daryl. Have you ever seen Nick be harmed by smoking weed? Or uh, holding a knife. Objection. Daryl is not a doctor. No, this is His opinion is irrelevant. I'll overrule it. Have you seen harm? I don't think you need to be a doctor to see harm. Nick never hurt himself with a knife, and I don't think he injured anybody that I can recall. And in terms of smoking, he never coughed. (laughs) And he seemed like normal old Nick after he took a hit of that stuff. So, you know, I would say that I didn't see him harmed in any way. Not that I would do it, but you know, that's, you know, people have different feelings about things. I see. Okay. So Glenn, who we have established came into the Forgotten Realms with us. Because of the judge. Because of the judge to save our children. Did Glenn end up saving his kid? Yeah, he did. He saved his kid. Awesome. Okay. Right. Uh, this is going awesome. so well. Yeah. Uh, Good job, Ron. <laughs> Daryl, you personally, have you ever made jokes with Grant, your son, that maybe he laughed or didn't laugh? Uh, yeah, I make jokes with Grant, but I feel like he laughs at most of them. You are under oath. He doesn't laugh at most of them. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) What part of you led you to want to make jokes and include him in jokes with you? Oh, man, we're under oath. I mean, I was going to say that it's probably to make him feel better, but if we're under oath, honestly, it's probably to make me feel better because when he laughs at a joke, it makes me feel good, like I'm being a good dad. You feel like a good dad. Yeah. Hmm. Is it possible in your non-medical but fatherly opinion that Glenn, <laughs> when introducing Nick to things that could be harmful potentially but weren't with the evidence, is it possible that Glenn was just trying to have fun with his son? Yes, I feel... And is I, it possible then that having fun with his son is what makes a good dad? I, I think it's part of what's making a good and dad. And if it's possible, then <laughs> is it possible that a good dad can also be a good person? Yeah, I think good dads are part of being a good I person. Arrest, Your Honor. Bill immediately Oh, wait, just, actually, like, uh, Henry had some questions too. Sorry. Like, <laughs> go ahead, bud. Hi, golly gee whiz. That was so great, Ron. I kind of don't want to steal your thunder, but I did just want to circle back to a couple of points made by the opposing counsel. Daryl, I'm just a simple, country hippie without a law degree, but <laughs> speaking to the incident with Scam Likely, what do you know Glenn's profession to be? He makes money making music, which is like awesome. I, I'm no music man myself, but would you say that... Objection. Counsel is being modest. He's actually a great musician. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to enter into evidence the Rocks Rock EP. <laughs> I, I'm something of a music lover myself. Would you say that rock and roll is super cool? Yeah, it's awesome. It's the best music. And would you say that in our world, rock musicians can make a lot of money? Yes. Do you think a DJ for a Linkin Park cover band could ever make as much money as a Christmas cover band rock and roll star? Uh, 
I look at Henry for the answer. Can I roll sleight of hand to give? <laughs> yeah, roll sleight of hand to roll sleight of head as you as you shake your this head. Daryl is trying to be Daryl in character. I know what you're trying to do, but <laughs> I got a a nineteen. Okay, so you successfully managed to shake your head no without anybody else in the courtroom noticing. I would say I cannot name a single DJ, but I can name a lot of rock and roll stars. So I would assume that people who do rock and roll make a lot more money than DJs. And DJs are probably mostly high school dropouts that uh, have never made it in life. Unless you're listening to this podcast, (laughs) in which case we love you. You hear objection from across the room. You look over, the door swings open. DJ Tiesto steps into the courtroom. (laughs) Followed by Skrillex. Paul Oakenfold. (laughs) Hey guys, it's me, Paul Oakenfold. <laughs> I've just come in on my private jet in there. Just got done playing Glastonbury. I've heard what you said about DJs. I quite disagree with it. Anyway, I'm going to go drop some molly and shag a bunch of supermodels on my private jet. Bye! Would you say that one of the things a father is supposed to do is provide for their child? Yes. So then doesn't Glenn Close deciding to protect his livelihood as a rock and roll musician, isn't he ensuring his son's future by making that decision? Yeah, I would. Objection, speculation. I'm going to overrule it because Daryl is from our world, so he is kind of an authority on what is or isn't uh, plausible in our world financially. Nice. I'll, I'll give oh, him cool. that. cool. Follow up. Daryl, have you seen the movie Air Force One? <laughs> have I seen <laughs> Air Force One? <laughs> yeah. In the movie Air Force One, when terrorists hijacked the president's plane. Oh, they don't know what they were doing. They do not know what they were doing. I'll tell you what. They got more than they bargained for. Yeah. (laughs) They hijacked the wrong plane. Do you think it would have been the right thing to do for Harrison Ford to negotiate with the terrorists? Absolutely not. That's what I was trying to say. Scam like loser terrorists. Glenn wasn't going to negotiate. Glenn is Harrison Ford in Air Force One. We win the case. Hell yeah, I high five Henry. I high five Daryl and I say no further questions, Your Honor. Uh, One more question. Daryl, have you seen the movie Vertical Limit? Are we just going to talk about the best movies right now? Because, yeah, I've seen Vertical Limit. Do you agree that it is a pretty good movie? Pretty good does not begin to describe. No further questions. Thank you. (laughs) So slinking behind uh, Radicus Finch this entire time has been a very small gnome with uh, a very cute little round face. And he pulls on Radicus's cloak and goes, can I jump in for one quick little bit of cross-examination? Go for it, kid. Cool. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hello! My name is Evan De Essence. I am a paralegal assigned to this case with Radicus Finch. I have a question for you, Daryl. The antagonists of the film Air Force One, what do they want? Uh, do you remember their demand to the president? Yeah, they wanted to free a bunch of crappy terrorists. Correct. And Harrison Ford said, uh-uh, I don't think so. And he answered with bullets. And God, that movie's awesome. Yes, for the first two acts of the film, he refuses, <laughs> does he not, to negotiate. Yes. Objection, we're not looking at the first two acts of this film. This isn't <laughs> Blake Snyder under trial here. <laughs> no, I agree, I agree. I want to look at the third act. Uh-oh. Because what happens Objection, in the third act? Objection, we have to look at the first two acts again. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a problem with the third act, it's probably a problem in your first, in the first act. act. <laughs> in the third act of the film, once Harrison Ford's wife and daughter have been kidnapped by Gary Oldman. Big mistake. Gary Oldman says, release my people or I'm going to kill your wife and your daughter. What does Harrison Ford do? Okay, so oh, Matt, out of character, needs to remember what He does, releases uh, the president because then I remember at the very end of the movie, the guys run, it's the ticking clock because the guy's trying to run away and they shoot him. At the oh, okay. End, so he does uh, yeah, he releases the prisoners. Would you say then, in that moment, he was doing that to save his wife and child? He was doing that to save everybody. So would you then agree that that was the correct thing to do for him to temporarily go against his morals and release the prisoners for the chance of his family being I don't think he was going against his morals. I think he was trying to save his wife and child. Len chimes in front of the back. Um, objection. Air Force One is a fictional movie. Objection. That didn't stop y'all from using it. Yeah, it has been entered into evidence. <laughs> Air Force One. <laughs> he holds up a Blu-ray of Air Force One with Wolfgang Peterson director's commentary. And he so hands it to the I just want to make bailiff. sure that the council will be able to look at the evidence tonight. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been able to. Bill says, uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to be in contempt. You're going to be in jail. So we'll get a DVD Wait, player. Wait, what? In a... I'm in jail already? We haven't even finished the trial. You perjured yourself. We're going to have to hold you in contempt while the court's going on, so. Redirect, Your Honor. Yeah. I, I stepped up the stand. Daryl, have you witnessed Glenn risking his life to save his child? Yeah, absolutely. Have you witnessed Glenn risking his life to save us? Yes. Have you witnessed Glenn risking his life to protect our children? 
Yes. Have you witnessed? There's a longer gap each time. <laughs> <laughs> would you call this man a good father? Yes. I would say also, since I'm already in contempt, I don't give a shit. And I stand up <gasps> and I hold the microphone. I would say that if Harrison Ford was in that same situation and the question was, hey, do you want to keep being president or bring a, some DJ or get a bunch of money? He would say, screw you, scam likely. I'll keep being the goddamn president of the United States of America and I'll figure out a way to save my wife and kid. He did the right thing. Clinton did exactly what Harrison Ford would do. That movie he kicks ass. Glenn kicks ass. You don't kick ass, sir. This whole trial is a sham. Thank you very much. I just start leaving. I just walk. That was like, well, you got to say sitting oh, down. God, I'm uh, so sorry, sir. I run back and I sit down. <laughs> I have one further question. I'd like to enter into evidence a number of Christmas wish lists that Glenn prepared and gave to Nick of things that Glenn would like Nick to buy him for Christmas. <laughs> Including on this list is a $500 drone. <laughs> Multiple years does this appear on the list. Daryl just starts hiding. <laughs> He's like, this is really good. <laughs> Glenn leans in and raises his hand. He goes like, actually, when the DJI Mavic 2 came out, that replaced the older one because that would be a new version of the Mavic. So, sorry, just go ahead. Thank you, Glenn. No, I appreciate that correction. It really underscores my point. <laughs> in response to how he believed Nick would get the money for this $500 piece of equipment for him, his father, he says, I don't know. Can't you sell laser pointers? You must be selling laser pointers or something. I mean... How is he getting all that weed? Am I right? <laughs> Glenn is the coolest fucking dude alive. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, do you think that is the statement of a good father? I think the Glenn that did that was doing the wrong thing. Interesting. I feel like he's learned a lot since then. Glenn has stopped doodling and been like, Whoa, oh, you do it. I give Glenn the look like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be higher. Not much I can do. Glenn starts to mime <laughs> flying a drone and like starts <laughs> gesturing at it. Like, how cool would that be? Like, and he moves his thumbs around and like pretends that his hand is a drone and points at it with his other hand. Being like, drone. I've never seen a man try to hang himself so <laughs> intently <laughs> as Glenn here. Radicus just gestures <laughs> at Glenn as he's doing this and says, no further questions. So uh, I guess with that, we could go. So it's defense's turn to call your witnesses now and stuff, but I'm kind of tired. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and call for a recess for everybody. So Ray, why don't you uh, take uh, Daryl to the meth bay supermax? Wait, I thought uh, we were kidding. I'm, I'm not. Wait, wait really? I'm, I'm in. Con uh, for, it's just until, you know, we next come back into court. You're on the legal team. So you'll come back. Can I get a blue ray player? He is a member of our legal team. We assume full responsibility for Daryl. Okay, not all of you go to the meth bay supermax jail. <laughs> okay, so Ray, why don't you <laughs> drag them all? <laughs> So the dragon gestures at you towards uh, the meth base supermax and is like, after you, okay. obviously. Thanks, Henry. Thanks for trying. And he leads you into your cell in the meth base supermax jail. As you go in, it is just full on the jail from face off. Like everybody's got to put on like <laughs> oh, shoes yeah. that fucking like <laughs> down to the fucking Glenn ground. Glenn is so psyched. Glenn goes like, anybody got a light? Anybody got a light? Got, right, guys? Anybody yeah. got a yeah, light? I like that movie, but I don't like being in it right now, Glenn. So you're all led into a cell. <laughs> See and anything you like? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wee, you good looking. They give you a DVD player for Air Force One, but then they give you a Blu-ray and they don't ever bring oh, back no. the DVD. So you don't get to watch Air Force One. Oh. Lights off happens. And then as you're all about to go to sleep, after you've talked about or maybe before you've talked about whatever your plan is for the next day of, of jury stuff, of the court, of the <laughs> trial, <laughs> you see a shadowy figure approach the cell and knock on the bars. Guys, I think there's someone at the door. I'm going to go check out who it is. And then you hear clonk, clonk, <laughs> clonk, clonk. And about five minutes later, I get to the front door of the jail. And I'm like, hey, who is it? Who's behind that mysterious cloak? The figure in the cloak throws the hood back and you see it's Bill Close. And he goes, hey, son, I'm busting you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Henry Oak, Beth May as Ron Stampler, and myself, Freddie Wong as Glenn Close. Special guest this episode, Jenna Steber, who played Radicus Finch. You can find her at the Jenna, one word, on Twitter, and she streams on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the underscore 
Jenna. Make sure you check out her stuff. Theme song and outro is All Right by Maxton Waller. Courtney Theron is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Robin Rapp helps us with transcriptions. Radicus Finch was submitted by Camden Matheny. Evan Essence by Dylan Caudill. This podcast has a Patreon, and on that Patreon are our fine supporters who help make this show possible. These people have awesome, cool-sounding names, such as Gwendolyn R. Carpenter, Brittany Dinger Jackson, Gavin Denning, James Watkins, Tyler Rubini, Bambi Roper, Dakota Connor, Kathleen McCray, Ray, Robin P. Smith, Avi Saban, Jordan LaCointe, Laura Edwards, Chris Blundell, Preston Jacob, Q Wand, Alex McDonald, Brandon Knox, Kevin Miller, and Bolinho. This past week, we put out the Walter and Payton bonus one shot where Walter and Payton must retrieve a powerful comedy artifact from a troop of militant improv comedy nerds with Will DMing and Matt, Beth, and myself providing NPC voices and additional goofs. Anthony simultaneously played Walter and Payton, and it is a sight to behold. Don't take my word for it. Listen to this clip. As you're falling towards the city, the first thing that happens is the dragon catches your eye and swoops down towards you guys. You guys get to do one thing before the dragon reaches you. So what do you want to do? Hear me out. Oh boy. Okay, so (laughs) what's the one thing that dragons have no interest in eating? On the count of three. I can't speak at the same time as you. Okay, I'll do it. Broccoli. 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 This is why we're such a good team. (laughs) You can hear the rest of that right now. If you support us on Patreon at any level, that's patreon.com slash dungeons and dads, in case you were wondering. The next stretch goal, a Star Wars miniseries about a down-on-their-luck jizz band. Yes, that's the name of the music canonically in Star Wars that they play in the Tina, it's jizz music. Please don't at me. It's coming out soon. You can find that along with all kinds of bonus content at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. Follow us on Twitter at dungeons and dads, reddit.com slash r slash dungeons and daddies. Thank you so much for listening. Our next episode is November 24th. Ooh, right before Thanksgiving. We will see you then. There was a time when you could read between the lines. You know they never brought you down. Never brought you down. And then Batman comes up and he goes, if you have somebody on a train and you destroy the controls so that it's going to crash into the water depot and you don't save them, is that murder?